Hello and welcome to Evaluation Guru. Through this series, we will share with you how to design, implement and manage evaluations, which in turn will help you improve the development effectiveness of your projects, programs and strategies, as well as foster accountability and learning. Today, we're talking about the concept of independent evaluation. What is independent evaluation? There are two words involved in this concept. One is the noun itself, evaluation, and the other is the adjective. What does independence mean in this context? Let us talk first about the first word, evaluation itself. Evaluation, as Michael Scriven simply put it, is a process to determine the worth, the merit, the significance of the object of evaluation. Evaluation is applied to objects, to personnel, to programs, to strategies, to projects. Evaluations are the products of this process. Evaluation in this sense is what it is known as a transdiscipline. And by the way, a very old transdiscipline is a body of our theories, of our perspectives, of views, of approaches that is autonomous in itself, but that at the same time serve the needs of other disciplines. There are other transdisciplines, as Scriven called them, such as ethics, logics, communication, statistics. And as I just mentioned, evaluation falls into this category. Now, how do we determine that word merit and significance of the object of our evaluation? There are seven steps to an assessment of uh, the word merit significance of uh, the object. The first step is to clearly identify and define the object. For instance, a car and a bicycle and an airplane. That means to define the boundaries of the object, the scope. The three of them dedicated to transportation, but evaluation methods will differ in each of these cases. The second step is to define the evaluation criteria. This refers to the areas of uh, the object of evaluation to be assessed. For instance, if it's a uh, vehicle, maybe comfort and speed, cost. For personnel, it may be on-time delivery of work of uh, the staff, expectations on soft skills, etc. Uh, for program evaluation, it may be relevance, effectiveness, efficiency, sustainability, as we normally use in program evaluation. The third step is to define the standards. So the standards are the bars that the object of evaluation must pass to be considered great, fine, or under par. The standards have to be well understood by the owner of the object of evaluation or by the person who is being subject to evaluation. The fourth step is to define the methods to measure the ability of the object of evaluation to meet the standards defined by the evaluator. It could be, for instance, uh, surveys. It could be data analysis of documents. It could be pure measurement with some gadgets that measure, for instance, uh, gas consumption or speed. Or it could be uh, simply perceptions. Uh, for instance, in the case of uh, personnel, you observe how the staff is managing soft skill, for instance, how it relates to other people. The fifth step, this is the critical step of the process of evaluation, measure the degree of accomplishment of the object 
And now it is time to compare with the standards that you have defined. The sixth uh, step of the process of evaluation is to sum up the assessment by criteria and to establish uh, an overall assessment by summarizing the criteria. And finally, the seventh step, analyze the data, understand how your object of evaluation has performed, why it has performed the way you have determined, and write up your evaluation. Those are the seven steps for evaluation in general. Now we come to the second concept of independence. Independence actually means to be free, to be protected from material threats to objectivity. And what are risks to objectivity? Well, they come in different forms. The threats to objectivity may take the form of organizational arrangements. For instance, the evaluator reports to the owner of uh, the object of evaluation or that the owner of the object of evaluation determines the resources that the evaluator can have to conduct this work. They also may be risk associated with conflict of interest. The evaluator may have been involved with producing the product. There may be also behavioral risk associated with biases of uh, the evaluator. There are a number of risks, apart from the ones that I just mentioned, you will never be free of uh, this risk completely because of the dynamic and contextual nature of the risk. But there are policies that can be set up against this risk to manage, for instance, organizational issues. There may be operational guidelines to control issues related to conflict uh, of interest. There may be training in, uh, with respect to behavioral awareness. But the fundamental point here is that independence is the protection of the objective view of the evaluator. There we go. Now we have the two concepts together. Independent evaluation is the process of determining the value, the merit, the significance of an object of assessment in an objective manner. Thank you very much. And I hope these concepts are now clear in the minds of evaluators and non-evaluators as well. Thank you for watching Evaluation Guru. We will be back with another episode on how to design, implement, and manage effective evaluation. Till then, don't forget to look up our social media accounts. Bye for now.